Okay, so let's get into some fun news for once. And that is Percy Jackson and the Olympians, Season 1, Episode 1. So, it starts off with Perseus, with, per, with Percy, um, going through, first, first a warning, telling people that if you think you're a demigod, run. <laughs> Do not. Do not um, embrace who you are. Just hide it because you're going to get into a heap of trouble. Which tells me that this is an older Percy narrating, narrating his adventures from when he was a kid. So, but he did say he was 12 years old and so... Maybe it's him, not so much when he's older, but just, I don't know, after this set of adventures is over. Um, anyway, so he first gives a warning, and then we see him narrating what his life has been like going to school and being being beaten and well not beaten but being bullied having having things thrown at him and how he would be seeing things nobody else can see until he met Grover because Grover understood and everything was going great until, as he put it, they came after me. So, Mr. Bruner, at a class trip, gave Percy a pen. And he was saying how mighty it is. And I just love the symbolism because the saying is, the pen is mightier than the sword. So, of course, it would be a pen and would, by the end, turn into a sword. But anyway, so he's looking at the statue of Perseus holding up the severed head of Medusa and thinking back to when, to when, um, his mom showed him that statue when he was younger and why he was named Percy or Perseus. And I thought, okay, this is where she's going to drop the bomb. No, she still doesn't drop the bomb. So Mr. Bruner is trying to get his attention. That's when he gives him the pen. And he's so caught up in in his memories, he's, he calls out mom. So, of course, the bully makes fun of him for that because, you know, she has to because she's a bully. And um, Mr. Bruner tells him not to worry about it. Like I said, he gives him the pen. And... Um, then, shortly after that, we see Grover and Percy um, eating lunch by the fountain. Now, he had earlier seen this um, teacher, Mrs. Dobbs, I think, which you don't ever you know, at the museum, which you, nobody thinks anything of. I mean, she looked stern, but, you know, it never occurs to anyone that that there would be anything wrong with her. So, they're at the fountain, and Mrs. Dobbs turns into what looks like a gargoyle. And, um, so, 
she attacks Percy. This Before this, Percy tells Grover that he's going to stand up to Nancy and push her into a garbage dumpster, garbage bin. And I'm just, you know, Grover makes good points that there are reasons bullies bully. And it usually has to do with their home life. But, yes, you should stand up to bullies, but not, not in the violent way. Just don't, don't give them the satisfaction that it bothers you. When they throw something at you, completely ignore it. Because if you do not react, I mean, granted, it's easier said than done, but if you do not react to their bullying, nine times out of ten, the bully will just get bored and move on to a different target. Now, that, of course, depends on what the bullying entails. I mean, obviously, if you're being pushed into a locker or something, telling the, the, a teacher or the principal is probably the best way because they'll deal with the student. You, you will never see them again. However, if it's something like throwing things at you, if you just ignore them, then they'll get bored. But anyway, so Percy wants to push her into a garbage bin. Grover thinks you shouldn't stand up to bullies. And yeah, there's a happy medium to that. <laughs> um, so Nancy... Um, of course, says something. So, Percy gets up to confront her. And when he's like, I don't know, a couple feet away, he reaches out and she gets shoved into the fountain. Now, I would love to think that this will make Nancy reevaluate her, her life choices. But... If she is a bully, I mean, rotten to the core type bully, then this will just make her double down. So, um, Mrs. Dobbs turns into a gargoyle, and then the next thing we see is everybody standing over Percy, making sure, you know, checking in on him and someone asks if he's dead and um, you see right before the attack the pen is starting to wiggle it doesn't do anything but I'm like okay so this is sort of like some sort of a dousing rod situation it senses when something bad is about to happen Nope, no, it doesn't do that. Well, I guess it does, but not exactly. So, um, next thing we see is Nancy yelling about, you know, what Percy did. And um, you next see them in the principal's office, both him and Grover. Which, okay, why is Grover there? Because... He literally didn't do anything. So, Percy is telling the truth, saying that he never touched Nancy, which is true. But neither Mr. Bruner nor Grover comes to his defense. Actually, Grover gets him expelled by saying, Oh yeah, he, he was t saying how he's going to get Nancy for the way she's been treating us since forever. And, yeah, so he, he totally pushed her. And Percy's just looking at him like, what the hell are you doing, dude? Why are you, why are you doing this? You're going to get me kicked out. Um, so then Mr. Bruner tries to talk to Percy, saying he's special, and Percy just lashes out and says, my ride's here. And it just says Yancey Academy. So I thought, 
I didn't realize at the time that that was the name of that particular school. I just thought that one of his parents worked at either this academy or a different one. Turns out Yancey Academy is where they were. So he was driven home and the and Gabe is yelling at a plumber as the plumber is walking out. And apparently the plumber makes frequent visits there because Because Percy is on a first-name basis with the plumber. Now, I mean, I guess he could be the landlord and not a separate plumber. It could be the landlord. But um, either way, they're on a first-name basis, which means that he, come, he visits there very often. And Percy apologizes for his dad. And Eddie's like, yeah, I'm leaving, you're going, I should apologize to you. <laughs> so obviously his dad is not the best person. And he did absolutely nothing in his scenes to make you think any different. So Percy keeps asking, where is his mom? Oh, she's working. You know, and I'm working too while he's sitting there watching TV. And, or as Percy says, losing in make-believe gambling. <laughs> um, it's like, that's what you think I'm doing because you're just a kid. He's 12, not an idiot. So, he goes to his, he starts going to his room and he sees his mom standing outside in the rain, getting soaked. Now, thanks to my watching, well, watching, reading the wiki entry to the, to the lightning thief, I'm thinking that this is foreshadowing, and, um, so, and, Earlier on in his reminiscing about when he was in second grade, you saw a puddle as well. So, so Percy talks to his mother. She said she overheard Gabe talking to the headmaster. And then she spoke to the headmaster herself to find out what was going on. Because... Gabe apparently answers any phone he hears, which, what the hell, dude? She has a separate phone for a reason. Makes me wonder if Percy's phone was just lying around, if he would do that, too. Actually, he would probably make a point of it. So... He men she, she he she mentions about Grover, or he she asks him about Grover, and um, he's he looks really sad, and so then she decides we're going to the cabin. So she tells Gabe that we're taking the car, we're taking the truck, and you know we're heading to the cabin, and he's just like. And I'll be back Sunday, and I'll buy you a sandwich. And he's just like, wait, what? <laughs> Why am I okay with this? Uh, because you don't have a choice, dude. She's taking no, she's not taking no for an answer. She's, I like, I like mom. I like her a lot. So, she takes Percy, they go to the cabin, and then she starts telling him, well, first he's explaining about these weird things that have been happening to him and the latest incident. And Mom made the mistake of knowing that the person involved was a she. To which Percy's like, wait, how do you know this? And it's either Mr. Bruner or Grover. One of them told her, obviously. So, 
Because Percy at this point is like not believing any of these stories that she's telling him. She just think he just thinks they she's trying to protect him and that his brain is broken and that there's no such thing as gods or monsters. Because she's trying to tell him that she fell in love with a god and that he's a demigod. And he doesn't want to believe it. Which, you really can't blame the dude. I mean, that is fantastical. But then again, you see what what's happening to you. Something weird is happening. But at the same time, I get it why you wouldn't believe that. Because that's also fantastical. So, as she's trying to explain what's happening, Grover comes in. And he's talking to Percy's mom as if, you know, we have to leave. I know I'm early, but, you know, the timeline's been moved up. We have to go. And at first, Percy doesn't want to talk to Grover. And then he notices Grover's goat legs. And... He's just trying to get Grover's attention, and he's like, why is there a goat in your pants? <laughs> and Grover's like, oh yeah. And keeps going as if there's absolutely nothing wrong with what's happening. Because he didn't realize that Mom didn't tell anything to Percy, because, like she said, you're early. So, they get into the car, and um, they're speeding away, and just as per first Percy asks Grover, who are you? And he goes, I'm Grover. And he's like, okay, what are you? Now, the way Grover said how he is there to protect Percy, that that is his job, and that about the mist, how he normally, even with the mist, he's normally able to sense danger a mile away, but for some reason, he didn't this time, which means that serious magic is involved. Which makes me wonder, is Grover as old as Percy, or is he a lot older, it's just that he looks young? Because, you know, if depending on the creatures, you age differently. So it's entirely possible that even though he looks like a young teenager, it's possible that he's a lot old. Anyway, so the Minotaur tries to come after them. And Mom is able to use the truck that's speeding towards them to knock the Minotaur back. But they end up in, in a pond. Everybody manages to come out unscathed, which actually surprised me with the mom, because the mom is mortal. She's human. So I was surprised at how... Well, she survived the car crash. I mean, I can understand Grover and even Percy because they're demigods. But the fact that Mom survived. So, so they're running to Camp Half-Blood, which they try. They started explaining to Percy on the in the car. Because, of course, Mom had literally no time to tell him anything. Plus, she, um, plus, I don't know if Percy would have listened. Because at that point, Percy was adamant that this is, you know, stop telling me stories. This isn't real. But, um, so Percy was, Percy's mom was, seemed like she was about to tell him. In the car before the Minotaur um, knocked out the window. Who his father is. It didn't happen. They 
they're running towards Camp Half-Blood, which, of course, Mom can't go to because she's human. And um, then Grover's like, oh, yeah, minute. Okay, I'll just go over there. So, Mom asks Percy for his jacket because... If he, if he can smell a half-blood in two different places, maybe he'll go after the wrong person. And, um, you know, because she, she's actually asking Grover, and he agrees that, yeah, that's a thing. So they are running to camp half-blood. And Percy, I don't know if, I'm unsure I'm, I'm if he's behind the veil or still on the other side watching his mom die which is never which never ends well I mean that's gonna mess you up I mean why wouldn't it so so Mer so Percy the the pen that Mr. Bruner gave him this time, forms into a sword, and Percy attacks the Minotaur, which, that's ballsy. I mean, you literally just learned you're a demigod. You know nothing about your powers or who your father is or how any of, how any of this works. Plus, Grover is supposed to be the one to protect you. He, he swore an oath. His... Percy's mom made him. So, so yeah. But this was obviously foreshadowing what's going to happen later on in Camp Half Blood. But um, he's obviously a natural. He in the, he's able to take down the Minotaur, and I'm sorry. I thought that the first time that the Minotaur Laughed, smacked him into a tree he would have been like okay peace out especially since he dropped the sword but no no he was able to keep it up and get the minotaur and I'm just like where the hell is Grover he literally just he literally just swore an oath to his mother that he was going to protect Percy where is he I'm assuming that he went to get Mr. Bruner and the other camp residents. But um, he, he takes care of the Minotaur and then he's out. And um, so then he wakes up surrounded by people. And you hear Mr. First you hear Annabelle. Which we find out it's Annabelle because Mr. Bruner tells her to be quiet. And he asks everyone to give Percy some room. And he welcomes Percy to the camp. And I'm sure Percy's like, what the hell is going on? And then you see glimpses of, I don't know if it's going to happen next episode or just throughout the season. But you see glimpses of, what's, of things that are going to be happening. And so I don't know if that was meant to be what's happening, you know, going through Percy's mind, or if that was just a this season on type, or it could be both. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this. I think it's fun, and it makes me wish that I was a young adult in the early 2000s, so I probably would have read this, because like I said, I was in my 40s when this book came out, so yeah, um, anyway, I think I've covered everything I wanted to on this episode, I'm really curious if now that he's in Camp Half-Blood, and Grover explained that the reason he had to get him expelled from school 
was to protect him, that he wasn't safe at school. Um, it makes me wonder if we're going to see that world at all during the season or, you know, sort of like with the Harry Potter books. Not necessarily that he would go back to that world because obviously right now it's Project Save Percy from whatever the hell is going after him. Because even Mrs. Dobbs, um, whom Mr. Bruner and Grover said there's no such person, either they were saying that because they were amongst mortals or because that was a completely different personality that was attacking specifically Percy and so literally nobody else knew about her. But, um, so yeah, it makes me wonder if he, if, um, he goes back into that world, if we're going to see Gabe again, um, if we're going to see what happens with Nancy, because Mr. Bruner is, is the, works at the, the school so I mean it's not like he's going to stop working there because Percy is in danger so because he is an adult and they even mentioned that they try the bad forces try to attack demigods before they become strong obviously nobody's going to be attacking Mr. Bruner anytime soon and that's why I also question if Grover is actually older than he seems. Because nobody's trying to attack Grover. It's just Percy. Um, let's see if there's any other stray thoughts I have from this episode. Um, I think that's all I have for this episode. And I will see you in the next one. And yes, I know that one is out. I'm going to try and get to it hopefully today. So with that, I will see you in the next episode.